There is this idea among some radio operators that coax interconnect cables or jumpers must be a certain length. Well, it's true. If it's three feet from your transceiver to the SWR meter and you only have a one foot jumper cable, it will not reach. So uh, yeah, uh, coax jumper cables must be a certain length, long enough to connect your stuff. But the idea that they have to be a certain length to give you the best match is a really silly myth. And there are videos here on YouTube by ham radio operators who should know better, showing how they calculate the exact length of jumper cables for what they call a cable null. I have no idea what that is. What is a cable null? The total length of your coax cable which includes jumpers and the transmission line out to the antenna, does not matter. Changing the length will not change your SWR. Oh yeah? Well, why does my SWR meter, which I paid $10 for at a ham fest, change when I change the length of a jumper cable. That's because you have a problem with your transmission line. There is current flowing on the outside of the shield of the coax cable. RF current only flows on the surface of a conductor. So you can have current flowing on the inside and the outside of the shield. Two different currents. Current flowing on the inside, that's good. That's going out to your antenna. Current on the outside, not good. It's called common mode current. This common mode current tricks your SWR meter into a faulty reading. If you don't have common mode current, your SWR meter will read pretty much the same no matter where it's connected. Now, here's a reference for that from the highest authority, the late, great Walt Maxwell W2DU, a renowned antenna and transmission line authority. If SWR readings change significantly, when moving the bridge a few feet one way or the other in the line, it probably indicates antenna current flowing on the outside of the coax, or else an unreliable instrument, or both. But it is not, because the SWR is varying with line length. Common mode current can be blocked with an inexpensive, easy to make, common mode choke, like this one. Just some turns of coax around a ferrite ring. Now we discuss common mode chokes or balance more extensively in other videos on this channel. And at legal CB power levels, you might not really have to worry about it, just follow the instructions that came with the antenna. Unless it says, don't coil extra coax cable. Watch the previous video on this channel to learn more about that myth. SWR, standing wave ratio, is determined by the impedance match at the antenna feed point. So, if your antenna impedance is 100 ohms, and you're using 50 ohm coax cable, your SWR would be 100 divided by 50, which is two to one. Changing the length of the transmission line or jumper cables will not change that. Here's another way your SWR meter can be tricked. 
Let's say you have a long, lossy transmission line. SWR is really a measurement of reflected power. It indicates the level of power reflected back from the antenna because of an impedance mismatch, for example, a 2 to 1 SWR. If you're transmitting 100 watts with a 2 to 1 SWR, about 15 watts will be reflected back. This is not a bad thing. Reflected power is not absorbed by your transmitter and wasted. It is not turned into heat in your transmission line. We discuss those myths extensively in other videos on this channel. But think about how this can fool your SWR meter. Here's your transmitter. Here's your dumb SWR meter. Dumb because it's easily fooled. Long, lossy transmission line. There's a 2 to 1 SWR because you have an impedance at the antenna of 100 ohms and a 50 ohm coax cable. So 15 watts is reflected back. Now because the line is really long and has a lot of loss, at least some of your power will be turned into heat before it even reaches the antenna. So what do you think happens to that 15 watts being reflected back? Some of that reflected power will also be reduced. So since your SWR meter is a measurement of reflected power, it will think the level of reflected power is less than it is, giving you a lower and incorrect SWR reading. Now, let's say this is long, lossy, cheap RG58 coax and a mile long. Well, by the time we get to the antenna, all the power is gone, turned into heat. But here at the SWR meter, which is very close to the transmitter, it's seeing a full 100 watts going out. No reflected power because it's all gone with a perfect SWR of 1. Wow, I have a perfect antenna, but no one can hear me. So we see how an SWR meter can be easily fooled. Now, I understand engineers laugh at them. They use lab-grade instruments in their work, not cheap SWR meters. But think about how silly this can become. Many CBers believe the 18 feet of cable that usually comes with an antenna is a magic length that gives a better SWR. But then they add an illegal 500-watt amplifier which is connected with a meter-long jumper. Now the transmission line's 21 feet. Well, there goes your magic cable. Now this is the myth that 18 feet of coax is a half wave in the CB band. It isn't. Because of something called the velocity factor in coax cable, a half wavelength may be 12 feet, not 18. And a half wavelength of coax only repeats the impedance measured at the antenna. So if your antenna impedance is 100 ohms, it'll be 100 ohms at a half wavelength down the line, not 50 ohms, not a lower SWR. The same. This is all about being educated by reading books like the ARRL antenna book. Why are so many people who should be very interested in antennas and transmission lines too lazy to read a book? I had one guy get mad at me because I would not explain for him in the comments section on this channel how to make a dipole antenna. I told him to look it up. He didn't like that. Why be a ham radio operator if you don't care about how things work? You know, you just want to get on 80 meters and talk about your gallbladder operation? So, don't worry about how long jumper cables are or how long the transmission line is does not matter. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to this channel and 73.